This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. As we continue to remember the life and legacy of Albert Wood Fox, the former Black Panther, who spent nearly 44 years in solitary confinement, longer than any prisoner in U.S. history. He died of COVID-19 at the age of 75 on Thursday, six years after he was freed from the Angola prison in Louisiana. We're joined now by three guests. Robert King was imprisoned with Albert Wood Fox for decades at Angola. The two of them and the late Herman Wallace were known as the Angola Three. Corrine Williams is with us from Middlesex, New Jersey. She's one of Albert Wood Fox's longtime attorneys. And in New Orleans, we're joined by Albert Wood Fox's brother, Michael Mabel. Michael, let's begin with you. Um, deepest, deepest condolences. You were with your brother when he died yesterday um, in the hospital in New Orleans. And you're in the studio where, um, well, in a studio, we interviewed you in New Orleans a few days after Albert was released from prison in 2016. You were again at your brother's side as you were receiving him when he was freed. Can you share your thoughts about Albert, about his life and his legacy? Well, you know, his legacy was based upon, uh, you know, change. And uh, no matter what uh, they needed to do and bring about change, you know, one of the things that we live for, uh, uh, as myself running, uh, visiting with him for 40 years, you know, he would teach me and I would let him know things that was going out. Uh, so, you know, I told him way back when I was a juvenile that at that point in time, when I was able to become a, a young man, that uh, I would visit with him and be with him uh, until, you know, to death do us part. And I made a, a solely vow, and I continue to honor that vow that his legacy go on. So, uh, you know, he, his body is gone, but I want his voice to be spoken to the world and continues. And, uh, He's speaking through me now to let, you know, let us know that uh, we, we can't stop. You know, there's a lot of change need to be done and, uh, you know, whatever we can do. And that's my plight, is to, con co is to continue to do what he would want done. And I promise him in that. So, you know, it was kind of hard, you know, but it only strengthened me. And, uh, you know, I just want to keep his legacy going. Uh, you know, and I just want to, you know, like you said, like glad I said, change is going to come. And, uh, and anything I can do to honor that, to make that change, I want to be a part of it. I want to turn to a clip of you sitting next to Albert three days after his 69th birthday, uh, that moment when you came on Democracy Now! and uh, he was free. This is what you said then. The only thing I felt and the only thing I can answer is that I know he's a free man when I'm able to walk across the seal of the door with him. <laughs> and that reality set in when we was able to do that. We're showing the picture of the two of you together, uh, Michael. What was it like when he came out of prison? You were there to greet him. Uh, when he came out of prison, uh, I, I noticed one of the things, you know, that— uh, uh, he was free. He was free. And uh, one of the things that he'd done before he died, and we talked about this many years ago, that he, wa he wanted his mind to be free. And, you know, that's one of the things he had in this book, you know, definitely stating, but, uh, you know, he was a free man, and he's free now. And, you know, I speak, you know, for him and through myself to the world. And I just want him to know that— uh, you know, that's one of the things we got, and that's one of the things we made vows to each other as brothers that, uh, you know, we would never uh, give up hope. And I think that may have helped him, and I'm glad, as his brother played a big part of uh, con uh, allowing him to t feel that that hope had came and that freedom was there. You, you know, know, that day that we interviewed you and Albert, we also interviewed Robert King in that same studio, the three of you. Robert King, who, when he got out of prison um, uh, about 15 years earlier, just traveled the country talking about 
who remained in prison. At the time, it was Herman Wallace and Albert Wood Fox. Then Herman got out. Um, when a judge threatened the warden, if he didn't release him that day, he would imprison the warden. And uh, Herman got out only to die in the next days of liver cancer. Robert King, you never stopped. And this is what you said, as you sat also next to Albert Wood Fox when he was free. Uh, when you hit bottom, there's no place but up to go. And Angola was the bottom. They even call it the bottom, and rightly so. And so we were trying to get out that bottom, and Amber, one way to get out the bottom is to try to come up and and do some things to kind of offset the situation that, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the sad situation that was going on in prison. But it it was a comfort also to our our own mind. I mean, we were politicized. We had uh, understood, you know, that we were or why we were being uh, targeted and 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 punished. And this give this give meaning to why we should struggle, more so because, you know, it was an unjust reason, um, an unjust position we were in, and I, we had to struggle against this. So that's Robert King in 2016. Um, Robert, you're joining us on the phone. Our condolences, our deepest condolences to you as well, joining us from not far from where Albert succumbed yesterday to COVID. Um, your thoughts? Amy, um, you referring to me? Amy? Yes. Hi, Robert. If you can share your thoughts today on yes. your uh, on on Albert Woodfox, his life and his death. Yes. Okay. Can you hear me? We hear you perfectly. Yes. Well, I was listening to Albert. Oh, I've been listening to the program since it started. Ah, uh, wow. It's kind of hard to, you know, to to, to get it in my mind. It seemed as if Albert was in the in the room with me, but that those are my my sentiments. But look, Albert, uh, my sentiments now, nah, you know, uh, Albert, he was my brother, uh, he was my friend. Uh, uh, I'm gonna miss him, much, you know, together. Uh, he faded back. Uh, uh, we saw some things that was amiss in prison and out of prison, and uh, we decided that we could add our little pepper to the pond. And so, um, just in short, he decided to do just that. He threw the pebbles in the pond, knowing that they would create a ripple, and knowing that they would eventually create. Um, uh, tsunami effect, and uh, he understood his his reasoning for uh, ex existing, and he lived out that. Um, it's kind of hard uh, for me to believe, you know. But then again, you know, the pebbles that he threw in the pond became ripples, became a wave, and uh, so this will carry him on into eternity. He won't be forgotten. Uh, he will certainly Again. not be forgotten. Um, I wanted to go back to 1972, when Albert and fellow imprisoned Black Panther Herman Wallace were falsely accused of stabbing the prison guard Brent Miller to death. Wood Fox and Wallace always maintained their innocence. They said they were targeted for being Black Panthers. In fact, Miller's own widow, Teeny Rogers, would later urge Louisiana to free Albert and Herman after she became convinced they were innocent. This is her in the 2010 documentary In the Land of the Free. I've been living this for 36 years. There's not a year that goes by that I don't have to relive this. And it just keeps going and going. And then these men, I mean, if they did not, do this, and I believe that they didn't. They have been living a nightmare for 36 years. So that that was Teeny Rogers. Um, Kareen Williams was one of Albert Fox's longtime attorneys, but that doesn't really describe her relationship. Her, his beloved attorney, Kareen Williams. Kareen, can you talk about the significance of why he was held, like Herman Wallace uh, and like Robert King? 
for so many years, again, uh, to be this dubious distinction of the longest-held prisoner in solitary confinement in this country for over 43 years. Yes, good morning, Amy. Um, and I, I can talk about that. Um, as you mentioned, he was convicted wrongfully in 1972, along with Herman Wallace, for the murder of this corrections officer, Officer Miller. Um, and at the time, just by happenstance, the Supreme Court had declared the death penalty unconstitutional in America. And so, you know, our position has been, based on the evidence as we litigated the cases in Herman's case and, and Albert's case, that prison officials really um, put them in the cells and, you know, told them that they were going to throw away the key since they couldn't execute them. So it was intended to be a extra punitive um, sentence that was not you know, given to them by a judge or through any lawful process, but by these prison officials at Angola Prison. Um, and for the next, you know, in Albert's case, 44 years, nearly 44 years, um, they were not only fighting to clear their name and overturn their convictions, but also fighting against these unconstitutional conditions that they were in of 23 hours a day in isolation um, for basically the duration of their life sentences is what uh, the prison officials of Angola prison were seeking. We only have 30 seconds, but if you can say how you finally got him out. Oh, well, it certainly wasn't me alone. There was a legion of uh, lawyers, paralegals, experts, and then people all across the world and um, in communities near and far um, who supported these efforts of rolling boulders up mountains uh, to get Mr. Woodfox out in 2016. And, you know, since we're limited on time, I'll just say, Amy, I'm so glad that you played the clip of Albert talking about, you know, if a cause is noble, a man can carry the weight of the world on his shoulders um, with his passing. We're going you know, to have to leave it there, but I thank you so much, Corrine mm -hmm. Williams and Michael Mabel and Robert King. We will all remember Albert Wood Fox. I'm Amy Goodman.